And so that means that the reason I put the move the boost to Sundays is so that um, we have something to do on Saturday. And I, you know, I worked out the budget for gas. I have 200 a month in gas, 200 for food. I mean, we, we can't go too far away at, for first, but if, you know, if it becomes popular, we can put that money back into longer trips. I want to go to Outer Banks, of course. And so the, the goal in the end will be Friday night to drive to a destination that's far away, like to maybe spend three or four hours and I'm going to set up my rig on the car so we can sit and talk, right? And we can just like do kind of like a driver stream. And, uh, wait, did they change this? Or so, yeah. Um, and then what I want to do is like camp overnight or KOA or something. And then in the morning, we'll like traipse around the town, kind of get to see what, you know, 10, 11 o'clock, we'll get to see what's up over there. And then I'll take a, a big break and we'll swap out the battery. Uh, I mean, I don't know if I'll even have to swap the battery out. It's going to be really interesting. I might not have to. I might be able to just do it solidly through. And then and then at night, you know, we'll do the nightlife thing. And then I'll drive home on Saturday night. I don't know if I'll drive home Saturday night or Sunday morning. It depends on how much time it takes. And it may be that I drive home that night, Saturday night. Uh, it depends on what the nightlife is like there stuff, you know. Um, and how hungover I am, if I am hungover at all. But, so that, I mean, that's kind of the plan anyway. Um, the only limiter right now is, you know, decisions about how much to stream and stuff. Because I stream a lot around the house and around, you know, walking streams and skating. I haven't started skating too. I'm starting to have dreams about it. I mean, that's how much it's for me. Yeah, totally. Uh, I love playing pool. I would think playing pool, pool on a stick, you could totally do that. That would be really funny. I, you could even stream that. I have all the stuff to stream that. I have to watch the stream at 160p because there is storm nearby XD. By, by where you are? Yeah. Yeah, there's this, there's, yeah. I mean, I don't. Yeah, it's hard to know if that's for me or not. I, we're, we're, we're pushing six, 6 k kilobits per second right now, which is pretty high. The real come-to-Jesus moment, pardon my Christian French, is going to be when the, you know, how much bandwidth I push per month. Um, and that's really the limiter for this kind of thing. I mean, people, streamers like Rob IRL, they invest a lot of money in it, in, in the cost for the stream, you know, for bandwidth and and I, I, I make 700 right now, so I could, I could reinvest that money back in and just do less food or something. But then again, I don't have any extracurricular activities. This is it. You know, like the average American with a good job is dumping all kinds of money into football or sports or games or, or you know, boats or yachts or motorcycles or something like that. This is what I do. This is. One time I was playing pool and the best player in the bar ran me out but missed the eight ball. Did he really? Then I threw all mine in and won. One of those games I'll never forget. Wow. I think Twitch must alter the structure of your brain. I think Twitch does alter the structure of your brain. I think it does. Um... Well, I tell you what. Lately, when I was when I was going to sleep, I would I would dream. I would wake up and I would have ideas for IRL stuff. Before I would wake up and I'd have. Sometimes I think I'm more of an agnostic sometimes, but I've been praying like crazy for Ukraine. Oh, me too. I really hope Ukraine does well. I, you know, what do you? It's so hard because if you pay any amount of attention in the world, it's so hard to not be fully depressed twenty four seven at what's going down. And then you get a sunset like this, you know, and you're like, oh, you know. I feel often like I live in a parallel universe. There's Twitch in the IRL. Yeah, yeah, yep. And there's Twitch in IRL. That's so true. <laughs> and then there's Twitch IRL, which is also a little bit parallel, you know. But I tell you, I, I, I may, I'm going through that weird phase where I'm putting weight on, even though I'm getting healthy. I can feel the strength in my body and stuff. Um, because, you know, my body's adapting. It's like, what the fuck? You're actually moving. You're not just sitting all day. 
and I really love it. I really love it. It's been really addictive. So, I mean, you know, Anyaski, even Anya's been talking about getting out and doing some IRL. I, I think, I think it's a good thing. I, I also think that we could mix it. We could do tech stuff and get out. You know, there's no reason not to go to a convention or, or that's another thing. I've been wanting to go to career conferences and stuff like that, not just for myself, but to kind of like, you know, drum up conversation and build networking and stuff like that. I actually want to start taking... I have to disengage from politics because it is depressing. Yeah. We're in Europe, pandemic, income inequality. We live in strange times. And we do. We do. You know, there's... You, you kind of... It's not optimal to t- turn yourself off. Path. It's like you were saying you used to do before where you would code on the road and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I would. I would code on the road all the time with my wife... When my wife and I were engaged, I spent... That's why I said we should retire and go live in a forest. Yeah. I would love to retire and go live in a forest. Um, I would do that. I would totally do that. If I could make it... If I could make ends meet, I would do it. You know? I I, I have mixed... At Vibing Creator, can we start a Twitch commune? Yeah, a Twitch commune. Holy shit. <laughs> that would be one fucked up place, man. That's all I gotta say. I, you know, as much as I love Twitch, there's a part of me that is just so turned off by it. And it's not, it's Twitch. It's not, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like, the, I'd be the worst Twitch partner ever. I am thinking about applying for partner. I believe I've got the stuff for partner, but except for, you know, I, I play music and stuff, but uh, there's other partners who play music all the time. They just do it on bot two or they delete the bot. I don't, I don't really care about being partner. I don't know why. Other than maybe it would get people to see stuff more and maybe they would want to, you know, start to code or get into the tech life or join a Twitch commune with us or any of the above, you know. So, God, that's a great sunset. I hope you can see it. At least a little bit. I hope you can see that sunset. I'll move my nose out of the way. The windows are horrible. We're going to clean the windows on Wednesday. So, so Yeah. But well, I love and loathe Twitch. Well, not Twitch, but rather the attention economy. Yeah, the attention economy. Yeah, that's what I, I've never heard it called that. I've never heard it called that. That's an interesting way to call it. I, you know, personal broadcasting to me is is a good thing. It's kind of like when the internet first came out and everybody used it for porn, and so they made it better, and then they still used it for porn. But now they used it for other things because they could buy stuff because the first transaction was a porn transaction. <laughs> so it's kind of, you know, it's kind of like that. It's like Twitch was first used for game and frankly porn. I mean, come on. I mean, most of the IRL category is porn. It's not an ASMR. It's all, it's porn. It's just a different form of it that is apparently acceptable. And, you know, I mean, gr- good people doing whatever they want. I'm not judging them. But but the, the fact is, is that eventually it's going to come around for more mainstream usage. I think it's already starting to do that. It's been doing that for a long time. I have a feeling though that people that use, I don't even know what, looking into attention economy. Attention it's economy. very interesting. Yeah. The attention economy, the look at me, you know, generation. I, I, that's, I'm, I'm a little interested in that. I'm, I don't know if that's pejorative, you know, if you can talk like that without people getting offended. Twitch for porn, Javastid, my avatar. Yeah. I mean, there's at one point, um, you know, at, at one point we were talking about this earlier and I'm just going to say it again. It comes up a lot, particularly now that I'm doing IRL so much. Um, do I want to live in a world where everybody is doing what I'm doing? No, I don't. Do I want to live in a world where a greater percentage of the population, maybe 0.1%, is doing IRL culture. I remember when in 03DTV there was a full-on porn stream. Oh, really? Was there really? Oh, my God. That's pretty interesting. Um, Yeah, I don't don't know if I could... I think... I think... I don't know. I... I understand why people like the internet, but I, I do like that there are certain sort of, you know, hurdles for people to get over. 
I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm okay with like straight up porn on the on the internet anytime you want to get it. I know that's the way it is for kids. I guess I'm just being old fashioned. Can I ask you for random advice, Rob? I mean, sure, yeah. For whatever I can provide. I I I don't know how much advice I can give you. But I mean I think it I think I still think there's a place in our society for a certain number of people who want to who are attention people, who are extroverts, who like to talk and like to engage other people and like to talk about their culture and share. I love it. I love watching the Australian streams and the New York streams and the Japanese and Asian Taiwan and all of them and the French ones. I love it. I live for that shit. And, and, and I, you know, I... I started a new job a few months ago yeah. and it's been really weird. I'm supposed to be a database admin at a bank and that's my official title, but I still have yet to touch a database. Oh, that's normal. They said in the interview they wanted me for my Linux experience, but I also haven't touched a Linux machine yet at work. When I sent my boss an email and asked for something to actually do, he just sends a frowny face emoji. It's so strange. Their intercommunication in general seems super bad. Yeah, if it's a bank, they kind of want you to proactively go find something to do. That's probably what they want you to do. Um, this is a common problem for people who are techies, uh, particularly, you know, who are really good at tech. They they tend to not seek out opportunities to fix things and, and do stuff. Um, if I they, love watching streams. It's everything and then the incentives to do what sells. I That's why I like streams. They, they're, look, there's good. There's stuff that's good and stuff that's bad. And streams are going to motivate you to hopefully do better. They're going to help you answer questions like this. I The reason I like them is it's like having a culture lifestyle journalist with whom you can actually share opinions and, and discussions of. And as for what to do about that situation, artification, I would say just seek out an opportunity to work on something. Look around for what needs to be done and see if you can do it. Um, you might be stuck in one of these jobs where you can't use Linux, you're only allowed to use Windows or Mac. Can you answer that question? Are you allowed to use a Windows or a Mac computer at work? Because I've, we've been having this conversation quite a bit lately and I wanna double check because my assumption is that most people cannot use Linux on their work laptop. And I'm, we're trying to figure out how to get over that through a virtual machine or Docker or something. So, yeah, that's a, that's a great sunset tonight. That's a great one. Great sunset. At Archification, I have had a similar problem. Just take advantage of every bit of training they offer, document everything you can, and basically treat it like you're an intelligence operative whose main job is to not F, K things up. That's true. It's a good point. <laughs> That's so I great. I use WSL on my work laptop to bypass all our security crap. Yeah. Rob, be, yeah. Any advice on learning JavaScript? As far as I know, you no. love it. Oh, come on. <laughs> I love JavaScript syntax. Um, I don't think JavaScript... I have no advice on learning JavaScript, honestly. The only thing that we're going to do with JavaScript... We're going to have one day, hopefully just one day, it might be two, where we make a portfolio web page. And we'll use JavaScript for some of this stuff, you know, for like selecting the sections of the page that you want, things like that. I don't, I, I need to make an app, a web app out of JavaScript. Um, is there, the, JavaScript is such a moving target and I am not following that target very much right now. So I'm probably not a good source of information. My most recent gig started with me spending three months learning about Kerberos. Yeah. Yeah. I, I spent three months learning JupyterHub inside and out to deploy it. And then they decided not to use it. It was totally frustrating. In fact, just... certification, lucky you. When I started at a real estate company, I started getting my hand in a lot of things within the first two weeks. Yeah. I started helping fixing a lot of their Excel issues and showed SharePoint Planner and showed them how awesome Power Buy could be for their reports. Most of the realtors couldn't even use Excel. They yeah. awarded me with a workforce reduction after six months. Are you when fucking you kidding me? Do a portfolio site? That is... Up the quality oh of my God. That is typical 1% real estate shit. 
let's fire the tech people. I don't know how to use Excel, but boy, can I close a deal. Oh my God. That is like so America. They want me on Windows and I work remote. So when I log in, I start a Windows VM, go to the internet page, open an RSA token app on my phone and log in. <laughs> then I have to launch my actual work machine on their network to work on over the internet. <laughs> they have an internal system to request software and certain things I'd like to use just aren't there such as Sigwin or Vim or WSL or anything of the sort. No, there's nothing. Excel, well, seriously. Well, welcome to Enterprise IT at Artification. That's what I have to tell you. And I have to tell you, be really careful right now because, you know, there's a gray area that we all operate in that know what we know. And that gray area is one where you, you, you're not strictly following all the rules. If you're following all the rules, you wouldn't do any of that, right? But the people that are enforcing the rules have no fucking idea what you're doing, let alone being able to catch you, most of these companies. So... You know, but but you have to be careful because some of it's against the policy there. So, you know, Randall Schwartz was was convicted of a felony hacking hacking for running crack Jack the Ripper back in the day. It's John now for running Jack the Ripper against the file uh, and showing it to Intel and saying, you guys need to fix your security here. And they they, they rather than saying thank you, they took him to court and won. And they convicted him. I think it was it a misdemeanor or was it a felony? I think it was. A, I can't remember. It was a long time ago. But it was a big deal. He had to do community service forever, and he he, he totally almost bankrupted him because he had to spend all this money on presentations for the court because the jury had no idea how to understand what he did. And at the end of the day, they just I said, made sure to have an email chain for everything. Yeah, for, for sure. Every software I request, I send an email to someone higher than me and ask if it's okay first. Oh, that's a great idea. That's a great idea. I mean, most of the time when I do that, they're going to say, why do you need this? I am so fucking tired of working for a company where you I, you want Tmux on the main server or I don't know, you want Vim version 8 instead of version 7. And, you know, you bring this shit up. Oh, God, there's a great scene right there. And, you know, you, you bring this shit up and all of a sudden you're the devil for like asking the question, like, why do you need Vim 8? Why can't you use Vim VI7? Do you know that? This is why I laugh so hard at people who get so addicted to NeoVim and shit like that. Like, do you have any... Excel is a pretty good general purpose tool. I if love Excel. If users understand it, use it instead of trying to get them to open your Jupyter Notebook. Yeah, I think Excel is fine. I love it. I don't open shift or whatever, whatever. But, but, I mean, you bring up a good point, though. I mean... The people that learn the skills that we have are constantly, constantly at odds with the mediocrity of the places of their employment. It is a regular problem. This problem has existed since Why the, do you need before. this to do my job? Why do you need it to do your job? Because you don't allow cross-compiling from Windows to Linux and I need to compile a package for a Linux server. Exactly. What is compiling? Archification. You should have access to a dev Linux machine. You should ask around for that. Yeah. These people would tell you the Excel was empty when they were on column CC or something crazy or on a different yeah, tab. Yeah, exactly. Well, I'm just listening to all this. This is awesome. Uh, that's exactly that's exactly what I'm talking about. Why? What's a compiler? Why do I need to use a compiler? Why do I have to do that? Why? Why can't you? Do that? And the other one I got, the one I get, they got lately that I can't defend against is like, why can't you just log into our login machines and use that? Why do you have to do this on your laptop? Why do you need a Linux on your laptop? Why do you have to have Tmux on your laptop? Why do you have to use kubectl? It's a little different in Academia BC. We don't have the same profit incentives. No. Well, in Academia, you also don't have the same limiters. I mean, I I remember it being envious of the people in Academia in IT because they really have nothing in their way. They can use whatever the fuck they want within reason. I mean, they, they can create their own labs and everything. They have a lot of latitude. Now they got other shit to deal with, right? Different politics and everything, but, but yeah, you're absolutely. It reminds me the internal affairs office of the police. Yep, yep, it's right. Night people, pot friend. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, good night, Plato. Um. 
Yeah, I mean, you just you just don't know what you're going to get. You Quick know? unrelated question. Do you recommend having two separate sets if the topics are completely different? No. Like gardening and tech? No. I tried that. That's a bad idea. I don't agree with that. I think you should tag instead. Banks IT follows the onion model of security, so there's no single point of failure. Yes, right. lots of freedom to make homemade labs, but it pays one-third road of the private sector. You betcha. It does. I know. It's it's you pay for it. You got freedom, but you pay for it in money. Yeah. I mean all the stuff you're saying is true. Alright, thanks. I think no, honestly with the Z thing. I tried that, and then I started tr having trouble managing which Z I was in, and then I made an automation or a command for changing what Z I in, and then I decided the only distinction between my Z my second brain is scope. At Arachel, of I've asked five different people already every month for a Dev Linux machine, and I keep getting we can't do that. I don't know how to give you that. We don't have any Dev machines. We don't have the space for that. I just end up sitting here internally thinking, excuse me. This is a billion dollar company. You can't afford a few extra drives on the VM host. It's insane. It's insane that that happens. It's insane. They probably have a Linux lab somewhere, but maybe not. Banks, banks got fucked up IT, a lot of them. But yeah, yeah. Um, but the set thing, so ultimately I decided to go with scope. The only distinction between my Zettles is who's gonna see it. So I have a private settle and I have a public settle and I put everything in there. And you got to remember though that when I go to search, I want to find everything. Get a dev R H E L V M on your workstation then. Yeah. And if you want to categorize things stuff like that, just start tagging stuff with hashtag or something. And then you can build indexes later out of all your zets that are based on those on those hashtags. And that will be your categorization and then you stay granular and it doesn't fuck up your process. The, the hardest part about separating it, I tried to do separate repos and that was a huge mistake. Because because I couldn't back it up, I couldn't render it, I had to move them all around, I had to combine them back again. So bottom line, I think I think Zettle, you know, lends itself to kind of a mono repo approach or even a just no repo, but just a, a single directory for all your data. Everything that comes out of your head. And, and I mean, if you think about how Lumen did it, that's what he did. You know, he had a huge, um, you know, Zettle cast. Metadata for all the video content you make, so you can search it similar to a Z. Yeah, and I, so how do you do it? I, but this sounds like a shitty firm. Just learn as much as you can on their dime and start interviewing after you've been there 18 months. Yeah, that sounds right. I would do that too. And then you put that as your first bullet point. Yeah. And I, I do, um, I do a, something called a Zettle cast. So I would write, I started, I've got to fix this whole process, but at one point I have actually built it into my command. You can go look at my Zep shit script. It would actually synchronize the Zettle with the description. It would render it as text and it would synchronize it with a description in YouTube. So that my YouTube descriptions were the same and, they, and it would add a link to the video. And I called it a Zettle cast. Because there's no way I'm going to put all that video in my Zettelcast, in, but I wanted to have reference to it in YouTube. I still want to keep that, but I'm also faced with another challenge, which is, you know, a five-hour video and chapter headings and stuff like that. I've gone, I've done so and many. I keep having to show up for these mandatory meetings and presentations that aren't relevant to me at all. That's 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 what enterprise. Doesn't the bank do business with? How to close a malicious account? How to detect shell companies? What to do if you detect money laundering? I'm not a broker or a teller. I'm a tech guy. What? That's so interesting. That is so interesting. That is typical that's enterprise. Expected. Yeah, that's it. That's it's it's. Thank you so much for sharing artification because the frustration that you're going through is so typical for people coming out of college, and particularly people who. I mean, look at your name, artification, right? I mean. You, you, you know, I was kind of mean about it to sometimes, but what do you think your possibilities of running Arch Linux on a laptop given to you by the bank are right now? You know, and so people come out, people come out of college and they got all these hopes and dreams that are based on all these things that they've learned and they've had ultimate freedom with. And all of a sudden they get shut down by the totalitarian regime they just signed on that's going to pay them however much money. And now they're telling them, you know, exactly when they can eat and sleep and how much money they're going to make and what vacation they can have and how what they can get health care. And they don't... Every bank employee and contractor is required by regulators to know that stuff. Yeah. 
Yeah, they are. And they need to learn it. And I'm not saying you shouldn't sit there in the meeting. But, you know, and the other I've thing... I've never worked in enterprise, so thanks for all the info. See, the... Um, I am rethinking jumping from the public sector. I mean, if you assume I run Arch, that's not really mean. You're just correct, lol. <laughs> yeah. And Arch is cool and all on your own time. But so often when I am talking to people about these decisions, like, they're all... I get, I get these, you know condescending Linux people that look down their nose at me for not running Linux on my desktop. I'm like, dude, I've done it. I know how to do it. I'm not doing it anymore. Here's the reasons. And one of those main reasons is to prepare you for this so I can reduce I the shock. Nixos cheeky smiley face. Yeah. NixOS. And you know what? If you want to run NixOS, that is totally fine. I know you've been big on Nix, Aaron, and that's oh. cool. I think NixOS is awesome. I just don't think it has any relevance in the enterprise world. And as I've said before, my top priority is preparing people to not be completely shocked by their first enterprise IT experience. And frankly, the more of us that go to these conservative places to work, the better off we'll all be because our influence eventually is going to kind of infiltrate. The team that I'm on right now, you know, they finally accepted that Windows is not a really good desktop operating system for doing the job of Kubernetes and so they've all got Macs now and they wouldn't have nobody had a Mac when we started and and I asked my manager I, very nicely when I got a new manager I was like you know I can't do my job on Windows this is impossible because at, at the time I couldn't do WSL2 and I couldn't do VMware it's not allowed on Windows ironically it's allowed on Mac but not Windows How, figured that one out <laughs> and it's like okay so, well, we got Mac here. So they gave me Mac. And I know Mac is not Linux, but it was definitely a step in the right direction. What I'm saying is that don't be too frustrated and don't put off those conservative jobs. Just accept that the hardest part for me is to sit there and know that they're going to... Before gonna... I started this job, I already had a Windows VM anyway for things Linux can't do. Yeah. And my laptop is a MacBook Pro. I right. use all three major operating systems. Exactly. And I can tell you, being familiar with all of them definitely helped me a lot. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Amen, brother, or sister, or whatever your race or gender. Uh, you know, I cannot overly agree with that. I think that that's really great. I'm glad to hear that that is helping you. And by the way, don't judge your entire experience based on this. And what is the average? I think it's five years now. If you're in the same job for more than five years, you're doing something wrong these days. Someone can correct me on that. I've heard this said. I've, I've heard people say that the way the volatility of the IT market these days. At my company, we write 5,000 lines of SQL with dozens of temp tables. All uh, querying our operational databases instead. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, you know, everybody's got so many crazy things going on. How's it going, Neil? Um, and... Oh... Here we are. We're at home. I mean, this has been some really great conversation. Linux give too much trouble on desktop. So for now, I will use it only on VMS. I think you're probably, I think that's probably wise. And I told you my personal experience with that. That's where that comes from. It's not, it's not because I like it. It's because I'm trying to help people survive. And a lot of the reason I'm going through this is not everybody gets the opportunity to work for a startup that lets you do whatever the fuck you want to. Right? Um, I tell you what, let me, how much battery we got? Let me let me.